Oh my God, look at this place. So this is the breezeway. Oh, this is amazing. So this is the breezeway. This is a tiki bar in the literal breezeway of my home between my garage and my, my kitchen. And uh, it's made up of collectibles and uh, vintage stuff and all kinds of Polynesian carvings. How long have you had this place? Like what made you decide to create this tiki oasis? Like tell us the story a little bit. Okay, so about 12 years ago, um, my girlfriend uh, at the time and I we're just kind of decorating it sparsely. There was like a couple of little things hanging up and my buddy Bamboo Ben said that he was gonna be doing a teaser for a tiki show. So he volunteered to build out the space. So we did that in about like a week or so, but it did not look like this. This is the updated, updated version. But he put in like that waterfall over there, the bamboo lattice that you can hang lamps from and kind of built like the foundation. And then a couple of really good estate sales and um, I ended up on some of the just most incredible Polynesian artifacts that you can't, you can't buy them anywhere. You just, you really have to collect them. Right, stumble right. upon them, yeah. So walking in here is like walking into an oasis. I can't even imagine just having something that is just so transportive in my backyard. <laughs> and it looks like you've collected so much stuff. Can you just take us around a little bit and show us some of, there's just so much cool stuff in here. Thanks, yeah, I um, I did want a space that was reminiscent of like the Adventureland in, in Disneyland, not just specifically Adventureland, but that kind of escapist kind of thing, like a tiki bar thing. Right. Well, I mean, obviously it's a tiki bar, but even with like flickering lanterns and stuff. It's funny, this fountain right here, I found that in an estate sale. They said that they found this originally in, at the Orange County Fairgrounds in 1959. And so just to have a piece of history here every day to transport you to the vintage tiki era is like such a big part of, um, well, really my whole life. I would literally just spend all my time uh, making tiki drinks, well, hanging out, having people over. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I do make <laughs> way too many tiki drinks. And especially now with the, with the Breezeway Cocktail Hour show, I end up drinking by myself out here a lot. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's for a show. So it's like, I have a garage too, so. <laughs> um, but I did want to mention that these, these tiles came out of a Trader Vic's. Tiki is an amalgamation of cultures. It's, it's Pacific Island really. So even, you know, some Japan and, and China weaves its way in there and stuff. But um, anything to, like you said, anything that's transported it. Right, right, right. Yeah. And even like, some of these big things that are uh, from Papua New Guinea. That was a vintage store that I found that. Right. But I did make a lot of the stuff myself too. Like you can see the breezeway sign up there. I, uh, I carved that myself. I made almost all the lamps. Uh, the bar here, I made the bar. This is out of a ship's hatch. Well, the, the top is a, is a ship's hatch. The bar structure my buddy and I built and then these posts are from Oceanic Arts and Whittier. Uh, but yeah, even like the, the dick guy in there is from Oceanic Arts. You can get them both ways. One of the dudes that owns uh, Clifton's, he's like, uh, you want it with or without the pecker? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, of course, with the pecker. So you reached out to me and you're like, hey dude, I seen your show and like you you enjoyed the, you know, the, the this. Yeah, <laughs> and, But you were like, hey dude, we should do a show, uh, but we should do one of your cocktails. And I was like, yeah, we totally should. I. Yeah, I have so many cocktails. <laughs> and in my head I was like, dude, I don't have any cocktails. I'm not a, I'm not a, a bartender or a cocksmith or any of that stuff. So with those 50 something cocktails that I had done over the years, I was, I, I was at least confident enough to think that I have a little bit of a basis for how to make something taste good. You wanna, you wanna taste it? I do. This is his very first cocktail, guys, and we're gonna taste it right now. Oh, that's the most comfortable bar seat I've ever been. I would say that this is in the style of Mariano Liquidini from the Mai Kai. Uh, most of his cocktails start with a base of uh, lime juice, orange juice, and white grapefruit.
Oh, I lost my flour. No, not the flour. <laughs> you want right, to taste it? I'm going to fucking taste this shit okay. right now. I can't, I can't have this drink in front of me. Yeah. Long and cheers. All right, cheers. Yeah. The Breezeway. This All is right, the Breezeway. Oh, hell yeah. This is good, dude. Here's what I like about it. Mm -hmm. You can taste that. You can taste all of the ingredients at the same time and then separately. You can taste the cinnamon is not lost in there. Mm -hmm. You can taste the ginger syrup, right? The ginger syrup is actually accentuating the cinnamon quite a bit. And you've got the tartness of all of the juices, but you've got that nice sort of bitter tartness of the grapefruit. Mm -hmm. It's not too sweet at all. Yeah. It's not too hot. It's really well balanced. I'm really impressed for a, a <laughs> big, like this is your first cocktail ever. Yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, you <laughs> have been recreating cocktails. You know, you did 55 cocktails or something on your show, right? Yeah. So like you have been recreating cocktails, but this is a really, really good job. You see the mist? I know, I love it though. It's kind of awesome. It is very tropical. Well, do you know about Don the Beachcomber, about how in the in the early years of Don the Beachcomber, he, he would play a record that had storm sounds on it. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, and so he had a, a hose that would spray water up onto this tin roof of his bar, just, yes. like, yeah. just like the sprinklers going on right now. And, uh, and people who were inside, it was like the first like tiki event thing. It's very Disney-ish to do something like that. Yeah. Right, but he did it first. And then the Tonga Room in San Francisco, every 15 minutes or so, it rains in the pool. You know, there's a big pool in the middle of the Tonga yeah. Room. I'm assuming that this bar went up in pieces, kind of like just over time, right? But like, yeah. how, how, like how much collecting is this? How many years of collecting is this? I'd say that since about 1998, I've been collecting nonstop. And that means estate sales, that means uh, Craigslist ads, uh, eBay. This bar was always built right here, but this is probably like the third version of this bar. It started out as a very modern kind of looking bar, like more like the Tonga Hut Palm Springs. Okay. Um, but over the years, I wanted to get it more towards a Don the Beachcomber or maybe like an early Trader Vic's kind of thing. There's a bar that's just pushed up against the wall here. It's from a company called Whitco. And uh, I saw it on Craigslist for $200. It's the same company that designed Elvis's Jungle Room. Okay. And uh, this bar regularly goes for like $2,000. Right. And I got it for 200 bucks. That's crazy. But if you're, if you're always looking the, the stuff kind of like lands in your lap, you know? And if you really love it, then it's not a, it's not a chore to find it. You right, know what I mean? right. I've got a lot of stuff from different tiki bars in here. Uh, like these, this barrel was from, from Don the Beachcomber. This, uh, this light right here, which is Mother of Pearl, I think, was from Don the Beachcomber. These two chairs that are over here were from Frankie's Tiki Room in, in Las Vegas. Everybody knows that I collect all this stuff, so people are constantly like giving me a heads up about, about decor, right. all that kinds of stuff. Exactly. It's a never ending project. You know, every time I say that the Tiki Bar is finished, the Breezeway is finished, I buy something else. And unfortunately this corner is kind of my overstock. There's an incredible Papua New Guinea carving back there. It should be like the focal point of somebody's tiki bar. Right. But right now it's just kind of in my extra pile. The other thing is, uh, is that I made most of these lamps. You know, a lot of this bar I created myself, a lot of the carvings that you see along the doorways and stuff. Do you have any tips for anybody that might want to create their own bar? Uh, their own like tiki bar? Yeah, like, well, I mean, yeah, like their own oasis, I guess. Yeah. Well, I guess it's kind of depends on what you like, because there's a lot of talk in, in the tiki forums, you know, that when you start getting nerdy about it, there are people that say tiki is whatever you want it to be. It's not. <laughs> tiki, I wouldn't think so either. Tiki was a very specific thing. Between a, uh, a certain era in the mid fifties, and then the de-evolution of tiki kind of happened around the seventies. Right. And pre-tiki was, was before that, and that was Don the Beachcomber was really pre-tiki. Um, I would say study old photos, try to replicate that look. I think lighting's really important. Colored lights, tiki bars are dark. They're supposed to be dark and, and dangerous and mysterious. Classic tiki was a grown up thing. It was people wearing suits, it was fine dining. It was an expensive endeavor, I think, um, to be part of it. It was, it was like Don the Beachcomber in Hollywood in the 30s and 40s was like the hottest spot in, the, in, the, in town. And it was people like Howard Hughes and Lana Turner. Right, going, and it was like 30 cent zombies. It's like crazy. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was crazy at the time, but God, can you imagine 30, 30 cent zombies now? I'd like a dollar's worth, please. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've just always been very um, interested 
in these types. I don't want to say like subculture because that maybe I don't know if it has like a negative connotation to say subculture, but it's just I'm like horribly offended it, by you. Just just like a like like such an interest. It's just such an interesting culture. Yeah, that just happens to then coincide with this cocktail thing that I'm really into as well. You know. Yeah. Every aspect of my life has been guided by tiki. The cars I drive, the guitars that I play, everything's everything has to do with that era. Right. And that's like the era of the best cocktails. <laughs> I guess that could be subjective, but <laughs> <laughs> So there you have it guys, the dopest home bar in Costa Mesa, maybe in California, maybe even the world. If you guys have your own home bar that you'd like to show off, drop us a message at theeducatedbarfly.com and tell us all about it. We'd love to come shoot at it and uh, I'll see you guys another time. Leandro, out. Should we make another one of these things? We should definitely make another one of these things for sure. Okay. <laughs>